I think it happened on both sides. I think it happened within the news media, and I, happened, I, I think it happened within society. So within society, you have shifts in economy, shifts in how families operate, shifts in mobility. People are able to travel more, they're able to move around more, they're able to live more places more easily. So the economy of society as a whole has changed over the years. Within the news media itself, you've also had sociological changes, but you've had massive technology changes. You've had massive geopolitical priorities shift. Um, you've had a lot more competition. Uh, when I was your age, there were four or five media outlets that people would go to over the course of a day. Now there are literally hundreds. And deciding who you're going to pay attention to and deciding who you're going to trust is now a daunting challenge for a lot of people. Um, there is a, a thought that in democracies, we have to listen to a range of news media sources to get a fuller picture. But for a lot of people, that's a challenge that's uh, distressing for them because their days are busy and then it becomes their decision as to who to trust. Credible media, accurate media, well-experienced media make mistakes, and those mistakes undermine that trust. Uh, there are media operations that uh, purposely narrow the field of what it is they're talking about or what it is they're covering because their owners have an agenda. Their owners have an idea of what they want the public to understand and prioritize. So if you understand these things, you get to a point for a lot of people of, I don't wanna to listen to any of it. So there are all these different forces that have led people to have less faith in information, not just less faith in news, but less faith in information, less faith in science, less faith in their leaders, less faith in any number of things. And this as a consequence means there's less faith in news media. Well, I think, you know, describing the media as a single organism um, is part of the problem. People have categorized media as being one thing. They've categorized social media as being another thing. And in fact, they're often combined entities. Further, I think there are trustworthy media but are they considered trustworthy by everybody? No. There are some people who simply because you say respect or check television, they don't trust it. They think those entities have an agenda and they are opposed to that agenda. Just as equally, people feel the same way about uh, Nova TV. They have an agenda. They're trying to pollute my mind, you know? And I think getting past that is an almost insurmountable situation. That, it's almost like the climate crisis, right? To solve the climate crisis, everybody, every country, every government, every entity connected to the climate, and that means all of us, must come together with a sense of shared solutions, shared problem solving. Well, that has never happened in human history. And now there are so many competing forces so there is no one solution to getting people to trust the media. Um, you have too many agents of change within governments, outside of governments, who don't have an interest in people having faith in news media. So I don't think there is any one solution. I think the idea of trust in news media is tied to trust in government, trust in leaders, trust in society as a whole. In some ways, yes, it does reflect um, the sort of general distrust that parts of society have in government, in leaders, in education, in science, in medicine, and so forth. News media is part of society. It's not an umbrella over society. So it reflects all of those societal problems. We are given so much information that in some ways, I think people feel impotent 
in their role in society. What am I able to do to bring change? What am I able to do to make change? It's not a matter of believing or not believing, trusting or not trusting, but there's so much. How do I decide what is important, what to prioritize in my life? And how do I then take up a role in helping society make positive changes? It's an enormous challenge. The idea is, as journalists, is our job to present society with solutions to problems. My feeling is no, our job is to reflect what the challenges that societies face. Journalism should reflect what's going on in society and talk about people who are bringing about positive change, but also talk about people who are holding back change. So I think if we're expecting the public to trust us, they aren't necessarily going to trust us to tell them this is the solution. That's not our job. Our job as journalists is to bring information to the public, a broad spectrum of information that may include people who are working towards positive change. But it, it is not our role to then say, we sanction the solution. We sanction this person. We sanction this process. Now, social media can, it can cover everything. It, it can be cat videos. It could be makeup tips from Kim Kardashian. It can be any number of things, right? So there's a lot of noise. It's like everybody turning up their volume to full measure so that you can't hear any one thing. So we have this, this vast menu and, and people who, you know, are what are called digital natives who grew up with social media they have a deeper understanding of those choices than an older generation who don't have the same sense of exposure to social media that younger people do. So there is this sort of um, thread, if you will, of prioritizing what is important to me in my life and what I want to do. And it affects how people treat the economy, it, it, how people change uh, their habits because they're worried about climate change. It uh, talks about how people make different choices and who they support politically. But it means that they're sort of jumping over or jumping past traditional journalism to reach their conclusions. Now they may use journalism as a kind of database what do I need to know about this person? And then they might turn, or might not, turn to journalists to sort of help navigate the value that they are placing on somebody they see in social media. It, it, in that way, journalism and news media can serve as a counterbalance to that noise. It can serve as sort of a, a scale that suggests, okay, this person has some credibility and, and we're going to give you this information as to why they have this credibility or why they don't have credibility, why they're just a bunch of noise, why they are in fact very problematic to the very issues that you're concerned with. So it becomes a sort of collaborative, unintentional collaborative relationship.